My name's Daver, and I'm gonna show you how I made this modern farmhouse table. This is Daver Made. To make things more simple, I decided to start with the tabletop first. I'm using two by eights that are eight feet long for the boards at the tabletop. I'm going to rough cut these first so it will be easier to mill them up. And this will also help me combat any snipe at the end of the boards when I run them through my thickness planer. The next step was to rip off the edges of the boards and then rip them down to their final width. But first I needed to pull some staples out, which is one of the many downsides to using construction grade lumber for a project like this. The final width of each board was going to be six and a quarter inches and the tabletop glued up was going to be 37 and a half inches wide. Now another downside to construction grade lumber is its moisture content. I used a moisture meter to determine the moisture content before I started milling these boards up. I ripped a little bit off one edge and then I adjusted my table saw fence to the final width of the board, then flipped the board over and ripped it down to its final width. Now, I didn't have a jointer at the time of this build, and I kind of wish I did. Most of the boards were flat, but there was one here with some twist, which I decided to proceed and add it to the tabletop, which I would have to deal with later on. I'm running the boards through a thickness planer just to smooth both sides, and this doesn't really flatten them, that's the point of a jointer, and my jointer sled isn't long enough for these boards, so hey, it's supposed to be a farmhouse table, and it'll add some character. Now it was time to lay out the boards for the glue up. I'm numbering the boards from left to right so I know which way they need to go in. I'm going to use dowels to help align the boards when I glue them up, and the dowels don't really add much strength. The glue should be plenty, but they help with alignment. And I'm also marking each board with a letter that corresponds with the board that it will connect to, so I know how to connect the dowels when I glue it up. This was the first tabletop I've ever glued up, and I think I went a little overboard marking where each dowel needed to go, but I think it helped. I put a stop collar on my drill bit so I don't drill too far into the boards, and using a self-centering doweling jig, I drilled each hole for the dowels. I drilled a hole almost every 12 or so inches into the board, and this took a long time to do, but I wanted to make sure I got the alignment right. I'm using three foot pieces of poplar as calls, and I'm putting packing tape on them so they don't glue to my tabletop when they're squeeze out. This was going to be a large glue up, so I moved my workbench out of the way and decided to do this on the floor. I'm using Type Bond 3, which is a waterproof glue, for the glue up. While this glue still has a longer open time than the other Type Bonds, I still felt pretty rushed to glue this all together, and this is where I definitely made a mistake. I should have glued this up in separate smaller panels and then glued the final panel together. I was having trouble getting the dowels into the holes that I drilled in the corresponding boards, and started to stress out a little bit. I then tried to remove the dowels that didn't fit and then just forced the table together using the clamps. And it worked out okay. And I think I used every clamp I owned in my shop. After letting the glue dry overnight, it was time to remove the clamps and check out how this glue up went. I would say for my first panel, uh, maybe a C minus, and I should have used another set of calls. This tabletop glue up was far from perfect and I had a lot of work to do in order to get it into a state in which I could use it. After scraping all the glue off, it was time to flatten the top. Right here I'm checking for high and low spots and using a pencil to highlight the high spots so I could take them down. A few months ago I was given some old hand planes and I decided to restore them. 
I thought that using them for this project would be a nice way to kind of get some experience with hand planes as I've never used them before and really get a good workout too. <laughs> I'm sure those who have used hand tools and hand planes are probably cringing at my technique, but I will say that after I got the hang of it, I was really enjoying using these for the tabletop. However, it did take a long time to kind of get the surface smooth and even as I could. I also tried to tackle that twisted board, but unfortunately it still ended up in the final product. I'm sure if I had a little bit more knowledge or skill, I could have gotten this dead flat. You do what you can, and you learn something along the way. And then for the bottom, I flipped the tabletop over, and I started using hand planes. It took some time, so I decided to bust out the belt sander. And then I went over the top and bottom with my orbital sander using multiple grits. I then used an ultra finish blade in my circular saw to cut the ends of the tabletop off. This blade should help prevent any tear out, which is really good to use when you are cutting a finished edge that everyone will see. I'm vacuuming any remaining sawdust and filling in the knots with some black star bond CA glue and then sanding it down to match the rest of the table. Prior to this I finish sanded the entire top using 220 and rounded over the edges and I used some mineral spirits to clean up anything that remained on the tabletop. Now it was time to work on the base and I'm moving the tabletop off my workbench so I can bring the untreated 4x4s that I was going to use for the table legs. Much like the boards for the tabletop, I rough cut these so I could mill them up and send them through my planer. I actually used my jointer sled because it was long enough and there was some bowing and twisting on these and since they were table legs I wanted to make sure they were flat and straight as possible so I took many passes. I shimmed up the bottom so it had a flat reference surface and I spent a lot of time running this through. Another thing that I also did was I planed these down to three by three. Uh, I wanted to go with a more slim, modern look. And these legs would be at a 10 degree angle. And then I used some two by fours and milled those up, similar to how I did the boards of the tabletop. This will be the piece that the legs attach to and the main point the tabletop rests on. I also cut the bottom of the table legs at the 10 degree angle to match the top. Here I'm taking the stretcher and just kind of seeing where the best location would be for it. I marked about six inches from the bottom of the legs to add this stretcher for support. And I'm just kind of dry fitting to see what the base would look like. Now it was time to assemble my table legs and my table base. I'm marking the center point where I would be adding two four inch screws and I wanted to recess them. So I used a Forstner bit and then drilled into those. I'm also using glue as well. So it should be plenty strong. The reason why I'm using a Forstner bit to recess those is because I'm gonna use some dowels to cover these holes up where the screws go. And that way you won't see the screws. You may notice that I have a level clamped to my workbench, and that is just as a straight edge reference. If you have a better way to do something like this, um, please leave a comment below. Now it was time to attach the top piece of the table base, which the tabletop would rest on. I'm drilling out a recess with my Forstner bit, so I can put these super heavy duty structural screws in it. Maybe a little overkill, but I wanted to make sure that the, the table legs and the base could hold the weight of the tabletop. I'm cutting some poplar dowels to fill those screw holes on the side. And then I used my Harbor Freight Japanese pole saw to cut them off. 
Now it was time to drill in with a Forstner bit the recesses for some leveling feet. Leveling feet are a really great option if you're not sure if your floor that you're putting the table on is going to be perfectly level. Now using a Forstner bit is not needed, but I wanted to conceal these a little bit. Then using a brad point bit, I drilled the final hole in where the screw would go. It's important that you drill that hole very straight to make sure that your leveling feet are straight. Then it was time to move on to the stretcher pieces that would support the tabletop and also connect the two bases that I made with the table legs. And again, I just followed the same process I've been doing where I rip off the edges to try to square them up a little bit better and send them through the planer. In order to connect these, I'm using pocket holes and pocket screws. And then I pre-sanded everything before putting everything together because I thought it would just be easier to do it this way. And I also sanded off those dowels that were sticking out and I think it looks pretty nice. Now it was time to do the assembly. I'm doing my best to make sure everything was square before I drilled it in, and I'm using the help of some of these cabinet clamps um, just to keep everything together and check for square a lot. I'm marking the center point for the bottom stretcher, and now I'm just gonna screw everything together. When you're working alone, I have to say that clamps are your best friend. And I used a lot of clamps to help me keep things in place while I worked. In order to fill the pocket holes, I'm using some plugs that came with my Milescraft pocket hole jig. And then once they were in, I just sanded them down. Then I finished sanded the whole base and used mineral spirits to remove any of the remaining sawdust. And here I'm drilling some recesses so I can put some bolts into the tabletop from the base to connect them. I'm going to be installing threaded inserts in the tabletop and I'm just pre-drilling some holes for those threaded inserts. Now it was time to start finishing the table and I use pre-stain wood conditioner before adding my stain. I'm using Verathane's dark walnut stain here and I think this looks really nice. The wood conditioner really helps the stain go on even and not blotchy. Once the stain was dry, it was time to add my polyurethane. Now, you have to have a temperature that is above 55 degrees in order to make sure that this works. Same with your stain. And luckily, I have a heater in my shop and I had it running pretty much constantly. And of course, it had to be the coldest week of the year. So I can't wait for my electric bill. In total, I added four coats of polyurethane and I sanded in between each coat. This is a threaded insert and this threaded insert is going to allow me to attach those bolts from the base to the tabletop. I'm using CA glue to kind of coat the threads and then with this hex key, I'm installing them. You want to make sure that they go in as straight as possible. Um, I can't say that I did that, but the table's connected currently, so I think it was okay. Then I was in the home stretch and installing the leveling feet. This process was pretty simple, and I'm really happy with how these turned out. And the very last thing that I did was use a brown paper bag to go over all the surfaces. I read that this is like using very, very fine sandpaper and something to do after your final coat of poly. And that completes the table. I hope you enjoyed this video and it inspires you to try a project like this yourself. While it's not perfect for my first table, I'd say it's pretty good. If you like videos like this, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.